It's been many years since wild horses roamed the grassy plains of West China. This is a land of extremes, where a herd survival can only be assured by a strong and worthy leader. Windchaser is the first wild stallion to lead a herd here in nearly half a century. His mares and foals will follow through good times and bad. None follow more loyally than the mare Black Pearl. But living wild is hard. When Windchaser is challenged and death stalks the herd, their loyalties will be tested like never before. She and the others must learn to adapt if they're to reclaim their former home. On the road to freedom, a convoy of exiles begins a long and difficult journey home. Rarer than the endangered panda, Przelski's horses are about to return to the wild. They're headed for the geographic heart of Asia. In West China's Xinjiang lies a vast dry grassland, the Kalamaili Hoofed Animal Reserve. It's been a long time since a herd of Pazelski's horses has run wild here. These horses are descended from stock taken to Europe in the 19th century. Herds have already been reintroduced to neighboring Mongolia, but this will be the first Chinese release. While they're corralled, there's plenty of good feed, but the project scientists hope that they'll adjust to wild grasses soon after their liberation. Still feeding on their mother's milk, the herd's young foals have no such worries. They won't have to fend for themselves until they're nearly a year old. On a late autumn day, a century of life and captivity ends with the simple act of opening a gate. Despite the occasion, there's a cold note of apprehension in the air. Freedom comes at a price. To survive, the horses must endure some severe challenges. Summer drought, winter cold, and predators. Returning here will test the horses' loyalties as well as their instincts. They must adapt to the conditions and work together for their survival, as their ancestors once did. For millions of years, the steppes of Eurasia were home to wild horses. Then around 4000 BC, men began to capture and domesticate them. The wild horse became a forgotten breed until 1879. A Russian naturalist rediscovered them along the border between Mongolia and China. Some were captured and taken to Europe. But hunting and interbreeding with domesticated stock continued, and in the 20th century, Przelski's horse became extinct in the wild. Three months after its release, the herd faces its first winter. In the arid heart of Asia, Kalamaili's winters can last as long as six months, but this horse is built to cope. As well as its short upright mane, Przelski's horse is distinctive for its small size and dense coat of winter fur, both 
are an advantage when it comes to conserving heat. Less than one and a half meters high, 10-year-old Windchaser is the head stallion. He faces a bigger challenge than most stallions. An ordinary herd numbers around seven to 11 horses. Windchaser is responsible for 27. They march in order of social hierarchy. In most cases, the ranking mare leads, followed by her foals, youngest first. Then come the others in order of rank. Windchaser is guardian rather than leader, spending much of his time at the rear of the herd, always alert to danger. His youngest foal enjoys a special position. Her mother is the lead mare, Cloud. Often it's Cloud who decides which direction they take, where they drink and where they graze. Next in rank is Black Pearl. Just after the herd's release, she became pregnant. Hers will be China's first wild-bred foal in years. Mutual grooming reinforces the social bonds. This helps avoid fights over status, as well as scratching itches you can't reach for yourself. The first real test of their instincts is to find enough to eat. Horses of this size need to find around three and a half kilos of feed a day. Winter snow makes it difficult and the temperature is around 30 degrees below zero. The horses haven't traveled far since their liberation. They stay within just 20 kilometers of the corral. Almost every dusk, they cross the nearby road and return through the open gates to the security of their old enclosure. They may not have traveled far, but their condition is deteriorating. They're not feeding well enough, and the poor nutrition is starting to threaten the herd's health and freedom. The scientists must encourage the horses to fend for themselves, but they won't let them starve. The time has come to spread out the emergency feed. Mares, like Cloud, need the most help. She must have a steady supply of food to nourish her foal as well as herself. It's not the most promising start. It's been a significant test of their survival ability, and it won't be the last. Early December brings a new challenge. <laughs> As heavy snow in the nearby Altai Mountains makes grazing impossible, Kazakh herders start to arrive. Every winter they return to the Kalamaili Plain, accompanied by their livestock. <laughs> it's a disturbing surprise for the herd. 
The nomads themselves pose little threat, but something they bring with them does. Domesticated horses. For the last century, they have been the masters of this place. They could actually be descendants of Przelski's horses, but man has made them different. Domestic horses have 64 chromosomes, Przelski's 66, but the two can interbreed, one factor which led to the demise of the wild herds. Like the Przelski's, they roam in bands with a distinct social hierarchy. This herd's leader is a stallion known as Longhair. Windchase's instinct tells him these strangers are a threat. Longhair's attention, however, is focused on the mares. Chaser isn't about to let him get near without some opposition. But when Black Pearl tries to assist, he sees her off. This is his fight and his alone. stood this new challenge, but the presence of another herd has awoken ancient instincts. To leave the security of the releasing station, to fend for themselves and to claim their own home range. As new year approaches, Calamile's winter gets colder. Temperatures drop to minus 40 Celsius. Horses are nowhere to be seen. It's been over a week since they left the vicinity of the releasing station, and the scientists are beginning to worry. Cold is not Calamile's only hazard. For the last hundred years, Himalayan wolves have been surviving on domesticated horses and other game. But Przelski's horse was once their natural prey. Wolf numbers aren't what they once were. There may be less than a few thousand. But Xinjiang's herders say that since firearms were banned, the population and its attacks on livestock have been increasing. The scientists mount a search for the herd. They head west in the direction of the prevailing wind. During winter, the lower snowfall in the west of the reserve means easier grazing. This attracts other hoofed animals like goited gazelles. Bactrian camels, released by the Kazakhs, can find their way here as well. Like the horses, countless hordes of these camels once roamed free in Central Asia. 
but truly wild Bactrians are now extremely rare. creature of hot, dry habitats. They're equally at home in the cold, growing a thick winter fleece that they'll molt in the spring. They and the gazelles are finding enough to eat. If the horse's survival instinct is working, it should lead them here too. Sure enough, the searchers find the herd at the brim of the Gobi, 80 kilometers from the releasing station. Windchaser and the pregnant Black Pearl are together, cold and exhausted. Windchaser smells the fresh feed the scientists have brought with them and makes the first move. It doesn't take long for the herd to follow his lead. They still prefer their captive feed, but are they finding enough wild forage to survive out here? Some obviously aren't. They're also suffering frostbite, but that's not the worst news. Lead mare Cloud and her foal are missing. is alive, but only just. Still not weaned, she hasn't fed in days and her mother is nowhere in sight. She is dying. The scientists conclude that Cloud died of cold and weakness, or was taken by a wolf. Survival in such low temperatures demands even more nourishment than normal. Even if they could withstand the cold, the food supply isn't good enough to risk the herd survival. Frostbitten and weak, Windchase's condition is of the most concern. The scientists have no option but to rescue the herd. gone, Black Pearl is head mare and leads the herd home.
It's been a four-day journey. They're exhausted, but the sight of familiar territory gives the herd a final boost. and hungry, they're also thirsty. Horses this size need from 6 to 16 litres of water a day. The freezing conditions mean there's been little to drink. The horses need a lot of care. Poor nutrition makes them vulnerable to parasites and infections. So vitamins are added to their water. But to really help the herd, they'll have to apply stronger medicine. No one doubts Windchase's strength of heart, but it's unlikely that he'll recover enough to lead the herd as well as a younger stallion. Windchaser must be retired. Two new stallions are waiting at the Kalamaili breeding station. Five-year-old Lucky Wind is the first. The other candidate is Windchase's brother, eight-year-old Flame. Stallions are ready to form their own herds at around three years of age, so they're both prepared for the responsibility. It's a 200 kilometer journey to the releasing station. Two stallions will split the herd into two bands. The scientists have already removed the vulnerable colts from the herd to protect them from any aggression. The next few days will determine much of the herd's future. Windchaser is now the role model for the young bachelor herd. Lucky Wind's first act is to show a strong interest in the mares nearby. It's an encouraging development for the scientists. Windchaser has other feelings. Lucky Wind presses on, undeterred by his protest. Stuck behind bars, there's little wind chaser can do about this turn of events.
It seems certain that he's lost at least one of his mares already. Meanwhile, Lucky Wind's traveling companion, Flame, has sought out the others. Flame is not the lover Lucky Wind is. He's a warrior covered in scars from past battles. He knows that to win the herd, he must gain Black Pearl's approval. Mares can be fiercely loyal to their stallion and may refuse to accept a new one for some time. Black Pearl wants none of Flame's advances and leads the other mares away. For now, the mares are true to Wind Chaser. And aloof from the other bachelors, he keeps an eye on them. Flame's subtle approach hasn't worked. It's time for a show of strength. Lucky Wind and his mares become the targets of Flame's wrath. Battles for mares may take days or even weeks, and mature stallions can inflict serious injuries on each other. In the face of Flame's sudden fury, there's little resistance. Ever the lover, Lucky Wind isn't about to continue a dangerous fight. Flame's tactic may have intimidated the others. But Black Pearl isn't impressed. She still carries Windchaser's foal and remains his mare. This puts her in a difficult position. She is the lead mare, but to a stallion she will not submit to. Windchaser may enjoy her loyalty, but he's too weak to challenge his brother. And Lucky Wind seems to have little option but to join him in the Bachelor Band. Flame can now concentrate on the mares. Wind Chaser and Lucky Wind will eventually decide who will lead the Bachelor Band. It's normal for males to join such bands after being ejected from the herd. Lucky Wind's day may come again. He has plenty of good years ahead. <coughs> Flame may not have won Black Pearl's heart, but by sunset, he's already enjoying his reign over the other mares.
it's Chinese New Year, and the scientists look forward to a change in the herd's fortunes. February marks the beginning of the year of the horse. The horses have fed well, and their condition is improving. Black Pearl's pregnancy is progressing, but there's still a long way to go before she gives birth in the summer. She's still lead mare, but her estrangement from flame disturbs the harmony of the herd. The other mares are now under the new stallion's dominion, yet she maintains her independence. She has little choice. Still pregnant to wind chaser, her ties to the old leader remain strong. By April, winter's grip on Kalamaili is loosening. Staff work on the water supply in preparation for the dry months ahead. They're not the only ones anticipating the change in season. Spring brings new growth and work for the Kazakhs and their livestock. Out on the edge of the Gobi, small bands of wild Bactrian camels are migrating to the northern end of their range. There are just a few hundred truly wild camels left. These ones are losing their winter fur in anticipation of warmer weather. They molt so suddenly it peels off in sheets. The horses are molting too. The brief spring will soon turn to a baking dry summer. But in the wild, nothing is predictable. Winter hurls one last storm at Kalamaili. Temperatures drop suddenly. The horses are in better condition to withstand the cold, but without their winter coats, they feel it keenly, taking whatever shelter they can. In its wake, nature leaves a harsh reminder of its cruelty. Another of the precious foals is dead. With the improving weather, the time has come for the Kazakhs to return to their summer pasture in the mountains. It also means that long hair in the domesticated herd will no longer hold sway over the plains. But as long as they return to Kalamaili, they will remain a threat to the purity of the wild herd. One day, they and the Kazakhs may have to be settled so the wild horses can truly reclaim their former lands. With spring firmly established, the plains provide plenty of fresh growth to satisfy the herd's needs.
Approaching maturity, young colts are beginning to take an interest in the mares, sniffing their urine to test their fertility. No leader can tolerate any potential competition. The time has come for Flame to eject his young rivals from the herd. There's a place for them with the bachelor band. They're separated from the herd by a fence. With the gates open, it's a psychological barrier more than anything. But Flame takes no chances and herds the mares well away from the growing bachelor group. Kalamaili's brief spring turns to summer. There's plenty of good feed out on the plains still, and the herd is venturing further away from the releasing station. Black Pearl has been pregnant for almost 11 months. Her greatest need now is for plenty of water. The plains' natural ponds are beginning to dwindle. Water is becoming something to be guarded jealously. The herd isn't willing to share, even with a small gazelle and her kid. When resources become short, competition decides who prospers. It's a fact of life faced by all wild creatures. As water sources begin to dry up, the mares are becoming unsettled. Black Pearl still enjoys their loyalty, but as thirst nags, they're becoming harder to control. They can smell water not far away. It's back by the fence in bachelor territory, 
but Flame will never let them near the other males. The lure of water is too much, and one of Black Pearl's own daughters makes a move. Communicating with nods of their heads, revolt spreads and they head for the bachelor's waterhole. Flame knows the mares need water, but he can't let them near the bachelors. His strategy is simple. Chase the bachelors off and let the mares drink without distractions. Once they've had enough, the stallion herds them back to safer territory. But the bachelor band isn't the only threat to the herd security. Crossing the road for water soon becomes a daily ritual. But the rubbish left by tourists can tempt horses into danger. the tourists are oblivious. Meanwhile, the scientists are keeping watch on Black Pearl. It's time for her to give birth. According to folklore, it'll happen during the next full moon. There's no telling how flame will react to the foal. Dominant males of some species will kill their rivals young. It's not common among horses, but little is known about Pozelski's wild behavior. It's normal for mares to isolate themselves at birth. Black Pearl's time has come.
When the mare returns, she's noticeably thinner, but alone. The blood on Flame's coat is an ominous sign. She refuses to let the scientists come near and leads them on a chase. is dead, its ribs broken. Flame may have kicked it to death in the night, but broken ribs aren't uncommon during birth. The stallion could have become bloodied out of curiosity or even concern for a mare in difficulty. Either way, Black Pearl is left forlorn. A late summer storm breaks Kalamile's season of drought. Her last link to wind chaser broken, Black Pearl has at last accepted flame. Harmony has been restored. The herd still faces many challenges on its journey back to freedom, but with its two leaders united, it stands a much better chance of success. After a hundred years in captivity, passing through a genetic bottleneck of just 12 individuals, there was no guarantee that this species could make it in the wild. But it seems that their instincts are strong. And despite the setbacks and obstacles, the scientists have plenty of reason to be optimistic. As Lucky Wind and the others mature in the bachelor band, there's a pool of stallions waiting for herds of their own to protect. And in breeding centers in China and around the world, a growing number of mares waits to join them. One more Chinese herd is already being made ready for release. Perhaps one day, wild Przelski's horses will roam the plains of Central Asia like they once did, thousands of years ago. <laughs> 